Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Al Haas, and with me here today I have Team 21229 Quality Control from Bellevue, Washington. As a first year team, they have absolutely been rocking it this season. They currently have the highest auto OPR in the world, having successfully completed a 1 plus 5 50 point autonomous every single qualification match at their Feynman Interleague competition. And they are currently the world record holders at 274 points with Team 11970 Titanium Talents. Today, Lectane and Terra are going to jump into their super awesome intake, deposit, automations, and just what makes this robot so consistent and high score. All that and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash FIRST updates now. All right, Lecky and Terra, why don't we jump into your guys' intake? It has so many degrees of freedom. Uh, I'm sure you guys can talk about all of them in depth and how you've improved them throughout the season. So why don't we just start with an overview? Yeah, so for our intake, we used a loop ball and we experimented around with the different materials that we used for this ball. So right now we just have this foam. And then, so on our intake, we have seven axon servos to extend out, lift up from the cone stack and then um, transfer to that take and then flip the call around again. And then, so in order to reduce the load for these two lift servos, we actually have this constant force spring. And then we, our arm is also counter sprung. So we have these two springs that are connected to this string. So you, um, the string goes in between these two standoffs. It actually pulls down on the standoff. It's so that means the claw is also being pulled up. So this just helps kind of reduce the stress for our claw servos. Yeah, no, that's that's super interesting. And I think one thing that's really interesting behind your intake that I find personally is that you guys decided to have like horizontal extension, linear extension, and rotational motion in your intake. Whereas we've seen a lot of other teams this season like choose to cut out one of those axes and just use like a longer arm to have both like rotational and vertical motion when picking up off the cone stack or when transferring or whatever. So what was your guys' decision to uh, have like all three degrees of freedom instead of just two? Yeah, so the reason we have a vertical is just to make sure our uh, cone unstack operations are really reliable and mm -hmm. not over the entire stack. Because there's always a risk of that happening with an, an arm, especially since it's at the front of a robot. We need to, the reason we have an extension out is because we want the robot to actually sit still while we're, while we're intaking. So, and uh, uh, while we're cycling in autonomous and in telia, we like to sit at one position, extend our intake all the way out so that we can reach our cone or cone stack and then the track and from, from our angled outtake deliver without moving the robot much. Yeah. Um, and so when you're yes. doing this like sitting still and scoring um, like procedure, I know that you do it in autonomous very reliably. I mean, perhaps the most reliably in the world. And do you also have like a similar procedure in Teleop for both like the human player terminal and like other parts? Or is it like, how do you use that in Teleop as well? Yeah, and because the distance in Teleop and in Autonomous are exactly the same, we actually sit in basically the same spot and wait for the human player to drop us a cone and then uh, sit there and, and just simply repeatedly move back and forth. In autonomous, sorry, in Teleop, we also have a button that does the exact same thing as autonomous and unstacks five times uh, automatically when we press the magic button, and it uh, gets all five from our partners come stack if they weren't done before. Wow, and has that consistency been like the same as you've seen in your autonomous programs, or is it something you still need to develop like a little bit? It's just the same thing. Uh, it's like the exact same code. <laughs> Yeah, wow. That's I mean, that's fantastic, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I think that's a perfect demonstration of that. 
I also see that you guys have like an ultrasonic sensor or a distance sensor on the front of your claw. So walk me through that. What does it do and how do you use it? Yeah, so this is an analog uh, uh, ultrasonic distance sensor, analog to cut down on like I2, I2C calls and save some latency here. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea behind here is when it, when it sees a cone, um, yeah, when it sees a cone, it's going to automatically grab it and move it to the back. I forgot to turn on the robot, so it's not active right now. Yeah, no problem. Um, we can just... And I also see that you guys have like yeah, wheels on the bottom of your intake. Was that something you've had like throughout the whole season or is that more recent? Um, yeah, that's been there for the, the entire season. In our V1, it was narrow. We had a narrow drivetrain and uh, also has similar wheels like this. Mm -hmm. But it's just to make sure that this is stable and doesn't like yeah. bounce. And can we see you guys like picking up a code and transferring it to the deposit? Yes. Fantastic. The robot is on now. So when it finds a cone, it's going to automatically move it back and then deposit it here. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And I think this is like a natural segue into your deposit. So why don't we just start with an overview? You have a ton of degrees of freedom on this as well. Uh, maybe not as many as your intake, but they're all definitely very useful. So walk me through them and how do they work? Yeah. So for our outtake, um, as you can see, we have a turret. And then we also have, we have a passive outtake. So we have this tray which, with kind of this inverted cone shape thing. So I'm going to sit on it. And then... And then we can just passively score like that. Yeah, no, that's a Something that's a great like that, demonstration. But... Mm -hmm. And so how uh like how is your turret powered? I know like some teams they use like very large like lazy Susans or like a bearing stack or uh you know there's a bunch of other methods out there, but how do you guys power your turret and how is it so stable? We're just simply using a go tube and uh two bearings on the top and bottom to support the entire thing and we also have this uh, extra wheel here to support the weight of the entire slide, so it's very stable here. Um, ours, we have a motor that's right here going down, and then uh, it belts over to the main system and turns it. Yeah, no, that's that that's fantastic. And how do you guys uh, use your turret like in Teleop? Are you using any sort of auto aim with the camera, or do you have plans to implement that? Walk me through that. Yeah, so we have this uh, camera in here uh, on our outtake. And autonomous is used to detect uh, our April tag, which is really reliable, uh, figure out that signal. Um, and we do have plans to later point it up and aim at the poles yeah. with OpenCV. Wow, yeah, no, that's that's very interesting. And so quality control, like with a team that's so consistent, I know you guys are always looking to score like a few more points here and there. And, you know, you really want to level up your game uh, to make sure you can win Washington States and qualify for the world championship. And then I'm sure do well at the world championship as well as another one of your goals. So how do you plan to do that? Right. Like what are the next steps in your robot and like what are you looking to improve? I think, first of all, we wanted to kind of. Um, we wanted to fix the claw and kind of just like expand the range of it since right now it's just kind of limited. Mm -hmm. um, and we also want to uh, uh, remove this uh, hazard up here, which can catch onto our opponent, our opponent during autonomous. Um, we ran a match with uh, titanium towns in it basically killed both of us. Um, and uh, yeah, and again, implement that camera aiming system. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you guys just know like there's a few changes you have to make and it's nothing like too, too complicated. So that's a very good uh, understanding like of like what you need to change. And what's that uh, square beam like sticking out the back? I thought I saw you just like move something back and forth. Yeah, so in the we align a robot in the middle of the pile in autonomous and obviously since it's right in the middle it's kind of hard to aim at so we uh, just stuck this little beam here that will mm -hmm. just rotate out and 
And basically, we could look at that and align to the middle of the tile more precisely yeah. since the tabs are like right here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. And so I think another question I have is like with your guys' driver strategy and game strategy, you guys are very versatile. I know you prefer to like sit in one place and stack on the field, but I've definitely seen you guys score like on the low junction with your claw or go to the mid junctions, high junctions, just everywhere around the field doing whatever it takes to build a circuit. So how has your guys' game strategy developed like throughout the season? And give me like an overview of it right now. Yeah, so originally the plan was more sit in the, like, the at one spot and cycle cones because that, that gives us a lot of uh, points already. But, like, as the game, uh, as the season progressed, people were starting to build circuits uh, on a bunch of junctions. And so we had to uh, pivot to a more territorial uh, strategy where we try to get as tried to build our circuit in the latter half of the game and also um, uh, but also like still do that cycling motion at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes a ton of sense. Quality control, I think this has been a fantastic deep dive into your robot. I'm sure there's so much more to talk about, but I think you've really given some insight to the community here. So thank you all very much. I'm really looking forward to see what people get from this uh, and learn. And I think this has been a fantastic interview. So reporting for first updates now, I'm Abbas, and again, thank you, Quality Control. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Check out our all-new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind-the-bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.